Have an off-grid system and cannot charge from a generator? Let's take a look at a few reasons why this might happen. This will cover Outback's Radian and FXR inverter charger models. Okay, let's break it down into three categories. Connectivity, programming, and wiring. First up is connectivity. For the inverter to accept the AC source, the generator must meet the following specifications. Voltage range 108 to 140 volts AC per phase. Frequency range 54 to 66 Hertz. When these conditions are within the acceptable limits, the inverter will accept the generator power. The Mate 3 will show when the AC source is present with a blinking AC input light. Once the source is accepted and connected, the amber light will turn solid and simultaneously the green inverter light will turn off. If it doesn't, press the AC input button and make sure your AC input mode is set to use. If you do not see the AC input light at all, make sure your AC input breaker is turned on. If the source is rejected after previously being accepted, the inverter will go back to invert mode and the AC input light will switch from solid to flashing. If this is the case, you can find out why the inverter rejected generator power by going to the Mate 3, then press the AC input hotkey, then press on disconnect here it will show you the last AC disconnect reason. Note, some generators are not able to maintain the output voltage and frequency when loaded more than 80% of its capacity for long periods of time. In this case, you may experience nuisance disconnects. The voltage limits can be adjusted to allow a wider voltage acceptance from an irregular generator. However, keep in mind the same irregular power will be passed through your house load. From the Mate 3, go to Lock, Settings, Inverter, Gen AC Input Mode and Limits to adjust upper and lower voltage limits. Next up is Programming. The nature of most generators is that they provide a not-so-perfect power. For this reason, Radian and FXR inverter models are equipped with an AC input mode called Generator to assist with this problem. To check, from your Mate 3 go to Lock, Settings, Inverter, Gen AC Input Mode and Limits. Your input mode will need to be set to Generator. While we are still here, also make sure you have your input priority or type set to Gen. Radian and FXR inverters have two input types with separate programming criteria. For this purpose, we want Generator input to be active. Press up once. Then scroll up to AC input and current limit. Check your input priority or type to be set to Gen. If you are experiencing nuisance disconnects for overloading the generator, then you may need to reduce the amount of current you draw from it. From the same screen, scroll down to Gen input AC limit and drop the current to the recommended settings from your generator manufacturer. Next up is your charger current. This has to be greater than zero for the charger to activate. Set this no greater than your recommended max charge current per your battery manufacturer. For multiple stacked inverters, divide the total AC charge current by the amount of charger inverters used and program the master with the result. The master will operate the slaves with the setting to achieve the total charge current. And of course, how could we forget? The charger must be turned on in order for the charger to work. From your Mate 3, press the Charger hotkey, then Charger mode, and make sure your charger control is set to Auto or On. As a last programming check, make sure you don't have any conflicting Mate 3 functions enabled, such as HBX, Grid Use, or Load Grid Transfer. Lastly, Wiring. Warning! Removing inverter covers expose the components that are close together that carry hazardous voltages. Use appropriate care to avoid the risk of shock. Proceed under your own discretion. Okay, as stated before, if the output power of the generator is fluctuating or drops under load and possibly even goes outside the acceptable voltage and frequency range of the inverter making a disconnect, this may be caused by a loose connection. Check all AC connections starting from the generator and work yourself downstream to the outback system. Retorque as needed.
Lastly, it is important that your generator's output wiring matches your outback inverter configuration, such as single phase, split phase, or three phase. If you are using a transformer for generator balancing, step up or step down, it's a good idea to check for trip breakers and connections within the transformer wiring. Alrighty, I hope this helps!